There are very few restaurants at Disney World that I have never been to before, and Morimoto Asia is one of them. That all changes today as we're here to check out their new lunch specials as well as some other menu highlights. Is this restaurant worth checking out on your next trip to Disney Springs? Let's go find out. <laughs> Morimoto is an elevated Asian restaurant in Disney Springs featuring cuisine from Iron Chef Morimoto. They're known for having extremely fresh sushi, plenty of rice and noodle dishes, as well as some of the best ribs in the game. Huge shout out to Morimoto for having me out today to try all of this incredible food. Let's head inside. This restaurant is absolutely beautiful inside and it's way bigger in here than I thought. There's kind of like two floors and I believe the second floor isn't open for lunch. Otherwise, I'd love to sit up there, give you a little, a great view. And one other thing that I love about the inside of this restaurant is that you can kind of get a peek into the kitchen. They have like a window and you can kind of see everything going on. You can take a look at all your food being made. Man, hard at work looking over the menu. I'm here with Dom from Allie and Dom's Wild Ride. If you don't already, make sure you go subscribe on YouTube, Allie and Dom's Wild Ride. I'll put the link in the description here. But we are here at Morimoto. Dom loves this restaurant. Do you know what it used to be before it was Morimoto? Yes, so back when Pleasure Island existed at the then downtown Disney district, this was called Mannequins. It was a nightclub and it was three stories, I believe. It looks like they cut off one of the stories, but anyway, it was an old nightclub. And I'm definitely excited to be here at Morimoto Asia. This is one of my favorite restaurants on Disney property. Wow, that is quite high praise. And I trust Dom with his food opinions with my life. So we'll see how this is. Now we are here today to try a lot of the lunch specials, which I gotta say, these all look really, really good. And the best part is it's a really great price. So we'll take a look over the menu here. And the number one thing that's standing out to me is this sushi combo here. You choose any two rolls and you get a miso soup or a house salad for $23. And these are all the roll options. So that $23 for two sushi rolls at Disney, at Disney Springs, at Disney World in general, is a steal. But other than that, they also have some nigiri and sashimi on the lunch menu here that you can see. And then we don't stop there. There is a bunch of other things on the lunch menu, including a pork katsu curry set, an orange chicken set, a ramen set, and then some katsudon, a poke bowl, an Asian salad. Everything on this lunch menu is $25 or less, which is really impressive because this is a signature dining restaurant. So you can expect some higher prices. So maybe lunch is the time to come to Morimoto. Kristen, there is never a bad time to come to Morimoto. While we're still making our decisions on what we're gonna order food wise, we did just receive our beverages and I went with the lychee martini. This has absolute lychee liqueur and a house made lychee concentrate for $18. Nothing like starting your, your morning off with some beverages. Well, it's, it's Cheers. The afternoon. It's, it's noon. It's noon. It's, it's 12 30 at yes. this point. <laughs> it's acceptable. That is a really good lychee martini. I must say, usually I'm not a fan of sweet drinks. This is very sweet, but it's an exception. I just love a good, uh, I almost said espresso martini. Oh my God. Well, I do love a good espresso <laughs> martini, but I also love a good lychee martini. And, this is definitely amazing. If you are someone who doesn't like the taste of alcohol in your drinks, this, this lychee martini is definitely for you. So I went with the forgotten highball. Now, a true highball is supposed to have whiskey in it. This one just has vodka, but I just wanted something light and refreshing. It has vodka, strawberry rose, and yuzu. I really love the yuzu flavor in it. It really brings out the drink. But a cool thing about this place is they have a true highball machine. It runs about five grand but it puts that carbonated water to the perfect amount it's supposed to be for an authentic Japanese highball, which is five times the amount of soda water. So it really does refresh you after a hot day. Now, I have never even heard of a highball, so I had no idea any of this existed. And I must say, by the looks of it, it looks super refreshing. It was so interesting to kind of find out that it has five times the, carbona the amount of carbonation as soda water. That is crazy. Let's try this out. Oh yeah, that yuzu is excellent in there. Also, you really can't taste the alcohol in this either, but I feel like you know it's there. That's, that is so refreshing and delicious. The highball that we got definitely does taste like a carbonated strawberry lemonade. If you weren't into that, they do have a couple of other options for the highballs. They have a traditional one with whiskey, like you were saying. And then they also have one with gin, lavender, and lemon. That sounds really good as well. 
Next time I come, I'm trying a different highball. All right, but back to the food and we put in our order for the lunch specials and everything is kind of starting to come out and we ordered so much guys. Now we are gonna start with the sushi combo which includes a house salad or miso soup and a choice of any two rolls. And we decided to go with a tuna roll as well as a California roll. And reminder, this entire plate only costs $23. That is two rolls with a miso soup for $23. We'll start by trying this miso soup here. Oh my God. That broth has so much flavor, so much umami. That is a delicious, delicious miso soup. But now for some of this sushi, and I gotta say, I'm usually not a California roll fan because I don't like imitation crab meat. It kind of just, it's all kinds of fish jumbled together and I, do, I just don't care for it. But here at Morimoto, they are using actual crab. So I decided for the first time in a while to get a California roll. All right, Dom is saying the quality of this roll is so good. I shouldn't even dip it in soy sauce. So I believe you. I would have to agree, Dom. It's very good on its own. The crab itself is so buttery, and then when you kind of mix it with the avocado, it just gives a perfect creaminess, and then you got the crunchy cucumber. This is hands down the best California roll I've ever had in my life. And like I said, I usually don't order them because I just can't do the, the imitation crab, but this is definitely an amazing California roll. Also, I wanna say there was so much crab in that roll, and just looking at the tuna roll, which we're gonna try next, there's also a ton of tuna in this one. This looks so good. Let's go for a dunk in the soy. It's almost a little nutty. Like I feel like they might use some sesame oil to marinate the tuna, which is perfect. It's again, really, really good. And for $23, you get two rolls, six pieces each, 12 pieces of sushi and a miso soup, 23 bucks. I mean, I might come back next week. Well, I am just in sushi heaven here and we still have more sushi to try. This is the nigiri sushi combo. It comes with a chef's daily selection of four pieces of nigiri and a maki roll for $25. And for our roll, we went with the spicy yellowtail. This has Japanese yellowtail, jalapeno, and scallion. So I'm super excited to dive into the nigiri here. Uh, great sushi all around at this place, but I think nigiri really shines more than the, than the rolls do per se. I don't know why, but whenever I come here, I don't really think about, oh, what roll am I gonna get? I think about what pieces of nigiri am I gonna get? Well, we've already tried the tuna, so I figured I'd go for the salmon here. Dom is making me eat it with two fingers. Dom and I actually went to a an omakase experience near like downtown Orlando together, and we did eat a lot of nigiri together, and we ate it with our hands. That's the way you're supposed to do it, so we'll do, the, do it that way here too. Should I dunk in soy sauce or no? No, no? no soy, I figured. That is definitely really good. The salmon kind of like just melts in your mouth. It really, really melts in your mouth. Other than that, you've just got the rice underneath. It really allows the salmon to shine. You said there was wasabi under there? I don't think there was any wasabi under my piece. The tuna the had wasabi. The tuna had it. wasabi. And it was just like the perfect amount. Well, Dom's piece of tuna had wasabi in it. My salmon didn't. And I kind of wish it did, but still, it really doesn't need it. The salmon on its own shines through really good sashimi. I mean sashimi. What, what am I supposed to mean? No, I mean nigiri. I mean nigiri. I feel like I might have been saying sashimi that whole time. So, correct me. It's it's actually nig nigiri. nigiri. Okay, it's the, nigiri. <laughs> so nigiri has the rice. Sashimi is just the fish. Okay, okay, nigiri. So let's just jump right into this yellowtail roll here. I love a sushi roll with jalapeno in it. Out of all the rolls that we tried today, I think this one probably has the least flavor. I'm not really getting much flavor coming through other than the soy sauce, so I wanna try another another bite on its own. With that, the only real flavor that I'm tasting is the jalapeno. If I had to choose between the California roll, the tuna roll, and the yellowtail one, I'd definitely get the tuna or the California again next time. Well, we've tried all the sushi now. Let's get to some of the other lunch dishes. This is the duck ramen set. It comes with a roll, a four-piece roll, or fried chi chicken dumplings, as well as a house salad with yuzu dressing for $22. Now, every time I see a video where someone's talking about Morimoto, they always mention the duck ramen and how good it is. I happen to love duck and of course, I love ramen as well. This looks great. First, we'll try the broth here. Oh man. 
again, so much umami flavor, and it's very, very fatty and oily. You can tell that like the oil from the duck. Duck is like an oily kind of meat. It kind of seeped into this broth, but it, it makes for a really delicious flavor. Now we'll kind of put it together with some of the noodles, some of the duck, of course, and then some of that delicious broth. Okay, we're just like three dishes in and I understand the hype now. Dom, you were right. Are they making these noodles in house? Probably. Cause I will tell you, they certainly taste like it. They have that like bounce and that chew of like house made ramen noodles. You get a little bit of that green onion flavor, a little bit of soy sauce, and then all of that duck fat kind of ties it all in together. It also has a soy marinated egg on top, which I love in a ramen. Amazing. I definitely think this bowl of ramen is a little bit smaller than you might get if you order it during dinner, but it comes with the dumplings and the salad, which is great. And there is still so much duck in there. Like they do not skimp out when it comes to the amount of meat. The next thing we're going to try came as a recommendation. This is the Katsudon. This has panko breaded pork skirt, dashi soy organic egg, scallions and pickle ginger on top of house polished white rice for 21 bucks. And I must say, this is a huge portion. This pork cutlet is absolutely ginormous. There's a ton of rice. This is a great portion for the price. Let's try this pork out here. We've got some of that egg on top as well as these caramelized onions, yum. Yep, that is delicious. I feel like the pork on its own would be great. It's really, really crispy and juicy. And then you just put that egg on top, it adds like a little bit of a creaminess. And then those caramelized onions are just the game changer here. I absolutely love a caramelized onions and I think they work really, really perfectly on this dish. Well, everything has been so great so far and we're starting to feel a little bit full, but there's still more that we wanna try. So I think we're gonna take a little bit of a food break and maybe get a brand new drink that I'm hearing just came out like the other day. Wow. Thank you. It's so fancy. <laughs> Well guys, what a presentation, and I'm usually not an old fashioned fan, but I heard that this old fashioned is a Wagyu washed old fashioned, and of course I love Wagyu beef. Sounded way too interesting to pass up. Here we have the Wagyu washed old fashioned. This has Wagyu washed Angel's Envy bourbon, Amaro, Morimoto bitters blend, and Damara syrup for $34. All right, well, this looks Fabulous. I'm gonna give it a little smell. I don't know if my mind is deceiving me, but I almost smell like a beef. <laughs> so I guess they weren't wrong about the smoked Wagyu. Uh, like I said, I don't know if that's just my mind playing tricks on me or if it's actually there, but definitely there. it is there. Okay, it's there. so it's there. So it's kind of like a uh, smoked piece of Wagyu steak. <laughs> with a nice orange scent to aid it along. Well guys, don't be alarmed if I make a face while trying this. I am not an old fashioned fan. They are way too strong of me, but I could not pass down a Wagyu rubbed old fashioned. It had to be done. It sounded way too interesting. Here we go. Uh, that's not bad. Well, I would hope. It's a, it's a lot smoother than I had expected. And when you kind of bring it up to your nose, you just smell all that smokiness. I mean, it came out on it came out smoking. Um, so no surprise there, but I actually don't mind it. I might not share. <laughs> Super smooth. This is an old fashioned I can get behind. But I will now pass it off to the old fashioned expert over here because I really don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to these. So I think Kristen's giving me a little too much credit. I, I'm definitely not an old fashioned expert. But uh, like I said, I am very excited to try this out. So cheers. It's good. I, I'm not. I don't taste that much Wagyu. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, they, they forgot they took the bits of Wagyu that was supposed to be floating around <laughs> in here out. Um, I would not order this again. I It's not really doing it for me. It's just. put my finger on it it's almost like a cinnamon in there yeah. that I, I don't like cinnamon so I would pass on this one that is probably the exact reason that I enjoy this old-fashioned here I think it's still really strong of course but it's not like 
overly, overly strong. I definitely taste the cinnamon. It kind of gives off fall vibes. Yeah, like this is like the perfect drink to have in the fall. I, I, I expected to taste maybe, I don't know what I expected with the Wagyu. I tasted maybe a little, I thought it would taste like a, maybe a little fatty or something. I don't know. Like I don't, I don't, I don't know what I was expecting here. <laughs> it just tastes smoky, which is so good. <laughs> Well, now that we've had some time to digest and enjoy our beverage a little bit, we're gonna take a look at the menu that's here kind of all day, the dinner menu. Now we of course have the sushi, but we've already gotten into all of that. We're gonna look more into this stuff here. Specifically, where are they? Oh, right here. The Morimoto spare ribs. This is really what I'm here for today. And then they also have a pecking duck. One of these days I'm gonna come here and get this this pecking, is it peaking or pecking? I'm not sure, but one day I wanna come here and get this. And then this is what Dom was talking about, the Morimoto Buribop. I feel like we have to try that too. If you weren't aware here at Morimoto, they have a window outside where it's kind of like walk up, grab and go food called Morimoto Street Food. And I went a couple of months ago and everyone said I had to try the spare rib. They have them at that window there, I got them. And I said to myself, I said, wow, I can imagine these would be fantastic if they were hot and fresh. They kind of tasted like they were maybe like sitting in a in a like warmer for a little bit too long. But I, I just knew if I ever got them inside the restaurant, they would be like so, so, so much better. They were good out there. They just weren't as crispy as I would have liked. But I hear these Morimoto spare ribs are one of the best things to eat in all of Disney Springs. So I'm excited to finally try them hot, fresh, and from the restaurant. These are the Morimoto spare ribs. They're pork ribs with cilantro and a hoisin sweet chili glaze. You can get three ribs for $18 or six for 35. I have been waiting a very, very long time for this and I cannot wait any longer. <laughs> they are so tender and they just, they really just fall right off the bone. Like the meat is so tender on here yet so crispy. I don't know how they cook these. So they're that tender, but also so crispy. And look at how hot they are. I can't even rip it off, but this bone will come completely clean. Oh my God. Yeah, look, look at that bone. Show that bone. <laughs> clean. This is amazing. Look at, it's just falling off when I take a bite. They are so crispy on the outside. They are really, really fried to absolute perfection. And that glaze on here is just like, the, it's it's the perfect balance of like soy and saltiness with a little bit of sweet from the hoisin. Man, you guys weren't lying. These have to be one of the best things to eat in Disney Springs. Even though try biting the bone. You don't have to eat it, just see how tender it is. Look at that, completely clean. And Dom is making me bite the bone to see if it's tender enough to get through. <laughs> No. Why'd you make me do that? No, no. <laughs> you just made me try and eat a bone. <gasps> oh my God. He just literally ate the... <laughs> and here we have the burry bop that Dom had us get here. It is a hot clay pot about 450 degrees, so please be careful when I leave it. Here you have your um, shredded nori, which is seaweed. This is your zen mai, sorry, your yuzu koshu paste, which is a citrus black peppercorn paste. We're gonna lather that on top of your fish, which is your hamachi yellowtail. It's gonna get this some nice flavors as we cook it. In the middle, you also have there your organic chicken egg yolk. We'll cook that up shortly. We're gonna put this onto the sides of our hot pot so we can start cooking. As we do that, you're gonna see a bunch of our vegetables. Here is your pickled carrots. Here you have your pickled daikon, which is a radish. Here you have your zenmai, which is a royal Japanese fern, and your sesame marinated spinach right over here. We're gonna crack that and kind of move things around just a little bit. And then we're gonna add in our birdie box sauce. It is a sesame marinated soy sauce. Just to kind of give it some flavor. Now as we're doing this, we're gonna mix everything up and break down the vegetables. Now have you ever seen any of the Iron Chef Japan challenges? I haven't. So it came from the 1999 one and it's for Iron Chef Japan in Japan. And it was Chef Morimoto up against the Odo faction. Now of course Chef Morimoto won. But he almost got disqualified. And that's only because the dish is kind of like a mimic of a dish called a bip and bop, which is a Korean dish. Mm. Now the Korean dish only uses chicken, pork, or beef. So by him using the fish and kind of a different taste profile, spice profile, he was able to claim that it was still authentically Japanese and won the title that way. Cool. And then won several titles after that. Alright, I'm gonna put this back together in the same way that I brought it out for you guys. Reconstructing. Mm-hmm. Nice little tower. <laughs> 
rebuilding the mountain. I'm gonna try to perfect it like Chef Mango did in that challenge. I believe in you. You have more faith than I do. <laughs> <laughs> so right. then the fish, half of it is. Uh huh. Butter. That's my next one. So as I peel this off, you're gonna see that half the fish should be seared, while the others are gonna remain raw or sashimi style, and that's so you can get the texture difference in both ways. Now, if you feel like you like it all seared, feel free to throw it back onto the sides of the pot. It will be hot for a little bit. Wow. Okay, how should I eat this? Should I eat just the fish or should I eat it with the rice first? How do you eat it? What's the what's the way of attack? So cut the fish in half. Cut the fish in half. That way you can try just the fish. Okay. And then you can get your next bite with both. I like the way you think. Okay, so just fish. Mm. That really melts. Like yeah. all the all the like Dissolves. seafood and stuff that we're having and even the meat, the ribs. It really just melts in your mouth, like, and I'm not even exaggerating. Like, I literally put that on my tongue and it just melted away. Now I want to try some with the rice and the hamachi here. Now I've had bimbimbap before, or it's either bimbap or bimbim. I don't know. I think it's. I don't know for sure. I'm not 100% sure, but I've had that before, and it's basically the same thing, just with like beef. Um, this is my first time trying it with fish, and yeah. The fish, I mean, you could just tell. It's just like the highest of quality. And I like how they kind of cook it on the outside. I do wish the fish kind of got more of like a little crust on there. That's what I was expecting. But it's pretty much just like this sweet fried rice. I believe they use some type of like maybe uh, hoisin in the sauce that they poured on the rice. Um, and the fish just completely melts away. So that buribap is really my go-to entree at this restaurant. It's so, so good. As Kristen said, the fish just melts in your mouth, like just dissolves almost. The excellent flavor is there. And you get what I was saying how earlier, you know, you have your bowl with rice, you have your egg component, sauce component. It was pork instead of the fish, but it kind of just shows how two similar rice bowl style entrees can have so much different kinds of flavor in them. It really is a preference thing because they're both super well prepared. But I think bonus points, this was presented at the table and prepared at the table. Got to give them credit for that one. Well, for dessert, there were a couple of things that stood out to me, including the churro donuts. But I saw they have a fluffy cheesecake and there was no way I was trying this out. This is the Japanese souffle cheesecake. It has strawberry shiso and a strawberry sorbet for $14. It's thick and rich and creamy while still remaining really, really light. And I just reviewed a cheesecake from the Italy Pavilion in Epcot. And it had a really, really good kind of citrus flavor. And this does as well. What this reminds me a lot of is creme brulee. It kind of tastes like the custard in a creme brulee, which I love a good creme brulee. And I was saying it'd be really good if you put a little like sugar on top and caramelize this. Oh my God, that would be like the perfect touch on this dessert. But as it is, man, this is, this is a really good cheesecake. Dom is hooting and hollering over there about his dessert. He got the Nama chocolate. These are chocolate truffle squares with caramel cream, crunchy puff rice, and caramel pearls for $14. This looks like it's going to be super, super rich. I have some water on hand. Ooh, that is so rich that it's nearly sour. It actually is sour. It's not nearly sour. It is really? sour. I didn't think it was sour. That's sour. That is like potentially the richest dessert that um, I have ever I, had I, in my life. I think it is. I me, have yeah. never had such a rich chocolate. This has to be like 100% pure chocolate. Oh my God. It's, it's like almost like fudgy. And you're right. It's like the inside of like a chocolate truffle. But like the whole thing is like the inside of the chocolate truffle. If you are a chocolate fan, I will say. You'll, you'll probably really, really like this. It's a little too chocolatey for me though. I'll stick with my, my cheesecake. Well guys, that is going to do it for us here today at Morimoto. I really loved my meal and I cannot believe it took me this long to finally check this place out. I think I have a new, a new spot added to my list of favorites in Springs for sure. I mean, everything we tried today was just, you could tell it was to the like highest quality and just very, very fresh from the seafood to the ribs, to the rice dishes, to the duck ramen to the cheesecake. I loved it all. They are doing it right over at Morimoto and I already cannot wait to go back. Huge shout out as always to all of my awesome Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. You are the best. As you guys are watching this video, I'm actually over in California experiencing the D23 conference. So I'll have plenty of Disneyland videos coming your way very, very soon. Make sure you guys all hit that subscribe button and 
I'll see you guys next time. Bye.